Evening, everyone. Welcome to another installment of A Reading with Queasley. Tonight, we'll be reading the infamous lost episode of Spongebob entitled Squigward's Suicide. If you'd like to read along, as always, the story will be in the description. So enjoy while you can. Let's begin, shall we? I just want to start off by saying if you want an answer at the end, prepare to be disappointed. There just isn't one. I was an intern at Nickelodeon Studios for a year in 2005 for my degree in animation. It wasn't paid for, of course. Er, it wasn't paid, of course. Most internships aren't. But I did have some perks beyond education. Two adults, it might not seem like a big one, but most kids at the time would go crazy over it. Now, since I worked directly with the editors and animators, I got to view the new episodes days before they aired. I'll get right to it without giving too many unnecessary details. They had very recently made a Spongebob movie, and the entire staff was somewhat sapped of creativity, so it took them longer to start up the season. But the delay lasted longer for more upsetting reasons. There was a problem with the Series 4 premiere that set everyone and everything back for several months. Me and two other interns were in the editing room along with the lead animators and sound editors for the final cut. We received the copy that was supposed to be Fear of a Krabby Patty and gathered around the screen to watch. Now given that it isn't final, yet animators often put a mock title card. Sort of an inside joke for us, with phony, often sometimes lewd titles such as How Sex Doesn't Work instead of Rockabye by Valve. Whatever. All right. When SpongeBob and Patrick adopt a sea scallop, nothing particularly funny, but work-related chuckles. So when we saw the title card Squigward Suicide, we didn't think it was more than a morbid joke. One of the interns did a small th throat laugh at it. The happy-go-lucky music played is is normal. The story began with Squigward practicing his clarinet, hitting a few sour notes like normal. We hear SpongeBob laughing outside, and Squigward stops, yelling at him to keep it down as he has a concert that night and needs to practice. Spongebob says okay and goes to see Sandy with Patrick. The bubbles splash the, the bubble splash screen comes up and we see the ending of Squigward's concert. This is when things begin to seem off. While playing, a few frame rates repeat themselves, but the sound doesn't. At this point, sound is cynicked up with the animation, so yes, that's not common. When he stops playing, the sound finishes as if it as if the skip never happened. There's a slight murmuring in the crowd before they begin to boo him. Not normal cartoon booing that is common in the show, but you could very clearly hear malice in it. Squigward is in full frame and looks visibly afraid. The shot goes to the crowd, with Spongebob in the center frame, as he is too booing, very much unlike him. This isn't the oddest thing, though. Which is odd, as everyone had hyper-realistic eyes, very detailed, Clearly not shots of real people's eyes, but something a bit more real than CGI. The pupils were red. Some of us looked at each other, obviously confused, but since we weren't the writers, we didn't question its appeal to children yet. The shot goes to Squidward sitting in the edge of his bed, looking very forlorn. The view out of his porthole window, window is of night sky, so it isn't very long after the concert. The unsettling part is, at this point, there is no sound. Literally, no sound. Not even the feedback from the speakers in the room. It's as if the speakers were turned off, though their status showed them working perfectly. He just sat there, blinking, in silence for about 30 seconds, and then he started to sob softly. He put his hands, or tentacles, over his eyes and cried quietly for a full minute more. After the while, a sound in the background very slowly, growing from nothing to barely audible, it sounded like a slight breeze through a forest. The screen slowly begins to zoom in on its face. By slow, I mean it's only noticeable if you look at ten it shots ten seconds apart side by side. His sobbing gets louder, more full of hurt and anger. The screen then twitches a bit, as if it twists in on itself. For a split second, then back to normal. The wind through the trees sound gets slowly louder and more severe, as if a storm is brewing somewhere. The eerie part is the sound, and Squigward sobbing sounded real, as if the sound wasn't coming from the speakers, but as if the speakers were holes, the sound was coming through the other side. 
as good as sound as the studio likes to have, they don't purchase the equipment to be that good to produce sound of that quality. Below the sound of the wind and sobbing, very faint, something sounded like laughing. It came at odd intervals and never lasted more than a second, so you had a hard time pinning it. We watched the show twice, so pardon me if things sound too specific, but I've had time to think about them. After 30 seconds of this, the screen blurred and twitched violently, as if something flashed over the screen, as if a single frame was replaced. The lead animation editor paused and rewound frame by frame. What we saw was horrible. It was a still... It was a still photo of a dead child. He couldn't have been more than six. The face was mangled and bloodied. I don't think that's a word. One eye dangling over his upturned face. Popped. He was naked down to his underwear. His stomach crudely cut open, and his entrails laying beside him. He was laying on some pavement that was probably a road. The most un- upsetting part was there was a shadow of the photographer. There was no crime tape, no evidence tags or markers, and the angle was completely off for a shot designed to be evidence. It would seem the photographer was a person responsible for the child's death. We were, of course, mortified, but pressed on hoping that it was just a sick joke. The screen flipped back to Squidward, still sobbing louder than before and half body in frame. There was now what appeared to be blood running down his face from his eyes. The blood was also done in a hyper-realistic style, looking as if you touched it, you'd get blood on your fingers. The wind sounded as if it were now a gale blowing through a forest. There were even snapping sounds of branches, the laughing, a deep baritone lasting at longer intervals and coming more frequently. After about 20 seconds, the screen again twisted and showed a single frame photo. The editor was reluctant to go back. We all were, but we knew we had to. This time the photo was that of what appeared to be a little girl, no older than the first child. She was laying on her stomach, her beret, her beret is in a, full, in a pool of blood next to her. Barrettes. Ugh, I'm an idiot. Her left eye was popped out and and popped, naked except for her underpants. Her entrails were piled on top of her, above another crude cut along her back. Again, the blood was on the street and the photographer's shadow was visible. Very similar in size and shape to the first. I had to choke back vomit and one intern, the only female in the room, ran out. The show resumed. After five seconds, after the second photo played, Squigward went silent. As did all sound, like it was when the scene started. He put his tentacles down and his eyes were now done in hyperrealism, like the others were in the beginning of the episode. They were bleeding, bloodshot, and pulsating. He just stared at the screen as if watching the viewer. After about ten seconds, he started sobbing, this time not covering his eyes. The sound was piercing and loud, the most fear-inducing of all, as his sobbing was mixed with screams. Tears and blood were dripping down his face at a heavy rate. The wind sound came back, and so did the deep voice laughing. And this time, a still photo lasted for a good five frames. The animator was able to stop it on the fourth and backed up. This time, the photo was of a boy about the same age. But this time, the scene was different. The entrails were just being pulled out from a stomach wound by a large hand. The right eye popped out and dangling, blood trickling down it. The animator proceeded. It was hard to believe, but the next one was different. But we couldn't tell what. He went on to the next. Same thing. He went back to the first and played them quicker, and I lost it. I vomited on the floor, and an animating sound editor gasped the screen. The five frames were not as if they were five different photos. They were played out as if they were frames from a video. We saw the hands slowly lift out the guts. We saw the kid's eyes focus on. We even saw two frames of the kid beginning to blink. The lead editor, lead sound editor told us to stop. He had to call the creator to see, see this. Mr. Hillenberg arrived within about 15 minutes. He was confused as to why we called him down there. So the editor just continued the episode. Once a few frames were shown, all screaming, all sound again stopped, Squidward was just staring at the viewer, full frame of the face for about three seconds. The shot quickly panned out to a deep voice, to, and the deep voice said, DO IT! And we see in Squidward's hand a shotgun. He immediately pulls the gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger. Realistic blood and brain matter splatters the wall behind him and his bed, and he flies back with the force. The last five seconds of the episode show his body on the bed, on his side, one eye dangling on what is left of his head above the floor, staring blankly at it. Then the episode ends.
Mr. Hillenberg is obviously angry at this. He demanded to know what the heck was going on. Most people left the room at this point, so it was just a handful of us to watch it again. Viewing the episode twice only served to imprint the entirety of it in my mind and caused me horrible nightmares. I'm sorry I stayed. The only theory we could think of was in the file was edited by someone in the chain from the drawing studio in here. The CTO was called it to analyze when it happened. The analyst, it, yeah, analyst of the file did show it was edited over the, by new material. However, the timestamp of it was a mere 24 seconds before we began viewing it. All equipment involved was examined for foreign software and hardware as well as glitches, as if the timestamp may have glitched and showed the wrong time. But everything checked out fine. We don't know what happened, and to this day, nobody does. There was an investigation due to the nature of the photos, but nothing came of it. No child seen was identified, and no clues were gathered from the data involved nor physical clues in the photos. I never believed in unexplainable phenomenon before, but now that I have se that I have something happen and can't prove anything about it beyond anecdotal evidence, I think I pronounced it wrong, sorry. I think twice about things. Um, that's the end of Squidward Suicide. That is, that's creepy. I will probably be having nightmares. Uh, that is just disturbing. <laughs> um, thank God I'm gonna only record one more today. <laughs> okay. Anyway, until next time.